Item Thank 10C, you. adopt a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute and file the Articles of Incorporation for the San Bruno Community Foundation. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Tonight's report and resolution proposes a small but important step in forming the not-for-profit that's required by the settlement agreement with PG&E. So what we're asking you to review is to authorize the mayor to sign and file the articles of incorporation that are attached to the staff report. As you might recall, the City Council held two meetings, one back in October and then one uh, just last, last month, February, at which time you discussed the name of the entity, its purpose, its mission statement, the composition of the governing board, and other details of its formation. You agreed on a name and a purpose for the entity, both of which are required for filing the articles. Uh, let's quickly walk through the articles because there's a couple of important things we want to highlight. Uh, first of all, it's obvious that uh, filing articles of incorporation requires an incorporator, and that incorporator can be either a natural person or an entity. And in this case, the incorporator is the city of San Bruno. And we're requesting that the mayor be authorized uh, to sign the articles on behalf of the city as the entity that's incorporating the nonprofit. Uh, second of all, you'll see that the entity is incorporated as required by federal law as a 501c3 tax exempt organization. And when you do that, you have to have certain magic words in the Articles of Incorporation which say that it's organized for public benefit and or charitable purposes. So that's what the articles say as a result. You did agree on a name previously. Now's your, your last chance to change your mind uh, before they're filed. Uh, the name uh, would, is proposed to be the San Bruno Community Foundation. And as of this afternoon, uh, we, we haven't found any other entity with that name, fortunately, although we're still uh, pending confirmation from the Secretary of State that the name is available. So we hope to, we are hoping to hear by 6.30 tonight, uh, apparently the Secretary of State's office closed before we could find out. So uh, we'll, if there's a problem, we'll let you know, but we don't anticipate that there will be one. The purpose of the entity, we, we did slightly revise the wording primarily for syntax purposes, but there's also the addition of, of one thing that I wanted to point out. So let me just read that off to you one, one last time here. The purpose would be to benefit the San Bruno community through enduring and significant contributions to and investments in charitable and community programs and publicly owned community facilities over the long term. What's different is the addition of the publicly owned that modifies community facilities. And that was recommended by our outside attorney, who's an expert in nonprofit law, and said you want to make sure that it says that so that you're not purchasing facilities that are owned by, uh, that are for the private benefit of, of any individual. So they're publicly owned facilities. So that's why we included that, that word in there. Uh, one of the other things you've noticed is that the articles require the designation of what's called an agent for service of process, which is a fancy way of saying if the entity is sued, you have to have somebody who's going to receive that lawsuit, and we're proposing that be me, the city attorney. Uh, the entity can, can change that uh, once, it's, once it's formed. Uh, the entity isn't proposed to have any members. It's not like shareholders of a corporation. Uh, no one's going to be voting except for the board. The intent is to have it be governed by a board of directors uh, that's appointed by the city council. And as you know, that action hasn't happened yet, but would be done at a future meeting. And last but not least, you'll note that the corporation can't engage in political activities and can't spend money for the private gain of individuals. And that is all consistent with the public and charitable purposes of the organization. So what's next? Uh, assuming that you provide the authority to the mayor to sign and file the articles, uh, staff has already started working on some draft bylaws, which we intend to bring back at a future study session. City Council, of course, will also need to select board members for the entity. And once that's done, as you'll remember from my last presentation, <clears throat> the, the foundation can then schedule some of its initial meetings. And at those meetings, the foundation will want to appoint officers like president, vice president, so on and so forth prepare other legal documents that are necessary, discuss a staffing plan, adopt a schedule of regular meetings, and then of course, and most importantly, begin its work for the community. That concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions of uh, city attorney? Ken? Mr. Chair, so the, ad, the last line that was added, 
publicly owned community facilities, uh, and prior to that saying uh, contributions to and investments in. Uh, so if we wanted to hypothetically help uh, a privately owned entity, it would we'd probably have to go through like a third party organization that would be helping them, for example? Uh, so it, it's going to depend on the situation, but in most cases, as long as there's a public purpose and the purpose is charitable, um, you can, the, the language is broad enough to provide you with that, or to provide the board with that discretion. Because the only thing that comes to my mind is, heaven forbid, another disaster, is that you have you know, privately owned buildings that are in dire need of you know, some assistance. Um, but I'm sure we can work a way where we can go through another uh, organization that would help assist in that, in, say, in a restoration or, or aid. Right. In, in general, the distinction is that the, uh, the funds of the corporation can't, what's called, inure to the benefit of private persons. And that doesn't mean that private persons can't get a benefit. It means that they can't get an improper benefit. So you can't be uh, doling money out to a bunch of, of individuals without also having a public and or charitable purpose. That's the point. Okay. Anything else for the city attorney? Mm -hmm. Action by the council. I'll introduce, I'll introduce the resolution. Vice Mayor O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye.